Hello. Today I have something a little different than my usual videos. There is a Hackadig competition using a 555 timer, so I decided to document a project and post it on Hackaday. Mostly looking to see if anyone has suggestions on how to make it better. The project is a basic circuit to convert voltage to frequency, but to do so cheaply with parts on hand and accurate enough to do some measurements without any specialized equipment. From my parts bin, I have lots of op amps and 555 timers, very standard and inexpensive components. In the 555 timer datasheet, we can see there's an application for a variable pulse density A stable timer. This is essentially voltage to frequency. So the main circuit is built around this element. The issue is the range of voltage for the control pin, also from the datasheet, is roughly two and a half to four volts. The goal of the circuit is to linearly respond to a sensor voltage of zero to five volts DC. So we need to build a circuit around the 555 timer to adjust the control pin from a reference voltage to set the minimum frequency and the input voltage to adjust the maximum frequency. Here is the circuit as seen in LT Spice. I'll also put up the block diagram on screen shortly. The circuit has several features to help make it stable as a voltage to frequency converter. There are ready-made chips for this application, but I don't have any of those, so I went with this. Also, the world of synthesizer sees this circuit used in lots of applications. The op amps are all used to adjust the voltages as needed to be within the range of the 555 timer control pin or as buffers. A buffer does exactly what it sounds like. It isolates the output from the previous stage to the load on the output of the circuit. The block diagram for this circuit is shown now. This shows the signal path as the DC input voltage is processed through the chain and eventually turned into a frequency. The inverter is important because the control voltage is backwards, so as it increases, the frequency would decrease. This is not the desired outcome. There are several low pass filters to help control the speed of the signal. If we didn't have these, the circuit may try to respond to signals that are too fast. The output has low pass filters to cut some of the upper harmonics and prevent aliasing when used with conventional computer sound cards. The 555 timer is operating in A-stable mode as a normal oscillator. The control voltage is effectively adjusting the pulse density or frequency of the output signal. Here is a demonstration of the circuit operating. First, we can see the circuit at 0 volt DC source voltage and the frequency sitting at 10 kHz. As the source voltage is increased, the frequency increases until getting to 5 volts DC where the circuit reaches its 20 kHz rating. The circuit is actually surprisingly linear. We can see that the circuit behaves quite well under the conditions of 0 to 5 volts DC on the input, which is where it's calibrated to operate within. But when we try to take this voltage higher, we can see that the circuit starts to behave a little bit weird. So we can see that the frequency starts to drift up, but then it actually starts to come back down again. So that's a bit of a strange behavior. Now if we switch things around, so we actually set this up so it's going to be measuring negative voltage, what we should see is that the timer will actually stop at a certain point, and that's exactly what happens. So once we get the voltage low enough, negative enough, so around two and a half volts negative, the timer actually stops oscillating. And then when we turn that back up a little bit, we can see that we do get some behavior here. But what we basically find is because we tuned this to operate from zero to five volts, that's the linear range. And once we're outside of that range, it's not very linear anymore. Although it can do some measuring there, it's not a good measurement. Some of the issues with this circuit are the accuracy of the voltage references and the timing of the 555 timer, which relies on a capacitor and some resistors. There are tons of applications for this circuit from controls to data acquisition. I plan to use this with a computer sound card to collect time correlated data with reasonable accuracy and fairly high precision. So thanks for watching the video and if you have any suggestions leave them down in the comments. If you want to see project details check out the project on Hackaday, the link's down in the description. Thanks again, and bye.